Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Just over a week ago, Ubiquity released Unify Access Application 3.3.22, which brought a ton of huge improvements within the Access application. They are now at 3.3.24, but you still will get all of these features. So we're going to go over this update and see everything that's new. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting or Unify Access Consulting, visit my website at MacTelecomNetworks.com. If you want to support me and my channel, I do have memberships on YouTube and Ubiquity affiliate links. Now let's jump right into this update. The first improvement under this update that we're going to take a look at is the ability to have two-step authentication for our Unify Gate Hub or our Elevator Hub. To do it on my Gate Hub or on my intercom, I'm gonna select the intercom, click on the settings wheel, scroll down and then go to two-step authentication. Under here, we have two different things that we could do. Require two methods, so to unlock this door, an access policy assignee must authenticate using two enabled access method. And then we have required approver. To unlock this door, an access policy assignee must authenticate first, followed by an improver. We're gonna go with the required two methods and then I'm gonna press apply changes. We're gonna go ahead and create a test user for this environment. We're gonna go down to the bottom, admins and users. Up at the top, we're gonna press create new and I'm just gonna create a new user and I'm gonna call this YouTube and the last name will be test. Under here, we're not gonna select them as an admin, but we're gonna give them a pin. And this pin, I'm just gonna say will be 9515 and we'll add that. And we're also gonna add a NFC card. So I'll press on NFC and then we're gonna select the gate. With the gate hub, we're gonna also have to hold up the NFC card to it. So I'm holding the NFC card up to it right now, and you can see that it has been assigned and we're gonna assign it to this user and then press create. With the intercom in my hand, and we also have that two-step authentication, let's go ahead and try it out. I'm gonna put in the pin code of 9515, and it's saying required second method authentication, and we're gonna use the NFC. So that's great that we could use that with the gate hub, also with the elevator hub. The next thing that we're gonna be looking at is our doorbell call for our intercoms, or you could do it with your G3 or your G2 reader pros. But we're gonna have it call out to my cell phone number, and they also allow third-party SIP, and we'll get into that. But what we're gonna do first is call my cell. So their doorbell call, we're gonna add a receiver. From here, we could either do it a user, we could do it a phone number, or now we could do third-party SIP. So I'm gonna put in a phone number and I'm gonna type in my phone number. Now that we have my cell phone number saved, which you can see the first couple digits, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press the doorbell button within the intercom itself. I press the ring button on it and it should ring my cell phone. Press one to speak. To unlock at any time, press the asterisk key. I'm gonna press the asterisk key and then it's gonna go and it has unlocked the door. So that's really neat. Also within this update, you can now add third party SIP. We're not gonna get it configured, but it's something that you could do. You click on configure third party. It's gonna need a server name, a domain, the port, proxy mode, UDP or TCP, and then the SIP account. So we could use a couple different providers. If we look up at the top here, it's showing that we could use Unify Talk, Ring Central, Free Switch, Free PBX, AV Link Pro, and Control 4. So if that's something that you want, they have now added it. The next improvement is to allow our admins and our users for visitor creation with identity endpoint. What we first need to do though for this is to go to our settings wheel and then go to visitors. If we wanna allow visitors or creation of visitors, we need to go ahead and allow user management visitor passes. With that checkbox turned on, we can now see that I have visitor pass within my Unify identity endpoint. If we click on the visitor pass, you would see we could create one. So I'll create it, Cody, last name will be M, and then the location or the doors that we want them to go into. And then we have a schedule. We're just gonna leave it to today and press create. With the user created, we now have share, save image, or we could send email, or we could do it by an SMS. So I'll say for an SMS. If we do the SMS, we need to enter a phone number, which I'm gonna enter my phone number in here now. The invitation has been sent and I should get an SMS shortly. All right, on this text, we could see that I did try it out a little bit earlier today, but we could add this invite or a visitor pass to Apple Wallet or onto our Google Wallet. If you're not using the Unify Identity Endpoint app, but you still wanna create a user and you want it to send out by SMS or create a visitor, sorry, you could create new visitor, put their first and last name in, you could do a visit reason and you could put the email if you like. You'd also select a person or you could do show more. So I'm gonna put in my own phone number here. With that phone number put in, we need to specify where this person could go. I'm just gonna say all locations and then we could do our different credential types. Right now we just have QR code, but we could do NFC 
or we could do pin. QR code is fine for me. Now this bottom one is the new one that I created. So we're gonna click to send the invitation and we're gonna send it by SMS. So that's really easy to get your visitors into your building without too much stress and doing it by SMS I find is the easiest way. That's it for the configuration in this video, but there are other improvements which I'm not gonna configure right now, but we could read through these quickly. So admins can now disable the ability to initiate live view from both the identity endpoint and intercom viewer. Supports enabling or disabling audio when recording video at the intercom or Reader Pro, and you need to be at these versions. Support power cycling offline cameras and readers connected to the access control hubs to bring them back online. UA hub door operators now support Jime and Siren modes, and it also supports a lot of new API features. So if you want to read all of this, I will link it down in the description below. Unify Access has come a long way since their Gen 1 products, and I'm really happy to see them keep improving on it. We deploy Unify Access everywhere. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this new update. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.